welcome to episode 7 of the Knit in the Grit podcast. My name is Jackson and I'm coming at y'all from my wonderful patio. It's like 70 degrees outside so I figured I'd come out here and do the podcast. Hopefully this time I'll actually upload it because I've filmed about three episode 7s and haven't posted any of them. Um, so welcome to my channel. Welcome to episode 7. If you're a new viewer, super welcome. Happy to have you here. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, if you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, or subscribe if you're so inclined to keep up to date on anything that I post. This is a predominantly knitting podcast. I have talked about some other things like sewing and quilting, <laughs> but uh, today it's solidly knitting. On to my knits. So in case anyone hasn't noticed, I'm wearing a finished object. This is the, I'm going to stand up. This is the Mistral Pullover. This is by Emily Green. Um, and I did this in sweater weather which is a uh, dragon horde yarn in the DK weight. I um, started this sweater last year and I finished it <laughs> last year as well for the most part in terms of the knitting and all I had to do was do all of the seaming and then pick up for the neckline. Um, and I, I'd never seamed a garment before and I didn't really enjoy it. So I put it down and I didn't want to touch it. But I picked it up yesterday evening and finished all of the seaming. So now I have a finished garment. And um, it's really cozy. And I love it and it was really great. I was wearing it this morning when it was really chilly. But um, I'm gonna go take it off now because <laughs> it's warm and probably a little bit more comfortable and I'll continue talking about it. Okay, I'm back. Gotta put on my Mardi Gras stuff since it's the, we got a little less than a week until uh, Fat Tuesday. Um, so, this baby. This was a labor of love. This sweater also forced me to learn a lot of new techniques and stuff. This, was, this had a lot of charts, this had seaming, um, there was a fair bit of shoulder shaping and just like shaping in general that I didn't have any exposure to. Um, I've never, I haven't made a ton of sweaters, but I've never done anything with a v-neck. So, um, had to learn mattress stitching and how to mattress stitch, you know, like bind off seams versus side seams and stuff so um, you know I kind of I stepped out of my comfort zone with this sweater and really had to uh, google a lot but I'm in love with it this was done in the size 2 um, so I'll post uh, like a full picture of me wearing this other than just the little video but, um, so the V, in terms of comments on the sweater, and this is probably just me and how I knit it and the size I chose to knit this in, I was expecting the V-neck to be a little bit lower than it ended up being, um, which is fine. I was hoping for a deeper V-neck. And, but I like where it is, and I haven't done the final wet block of this sweater yet. I'm gonna do that tonight, but I wanted to podcast before I wet blocked it, uh, just because this is probably gonna take a little while to dry. But, uh, so the V-neck's not as deep as I was hoping it would be, but I think that's more to do with my knitting and, like, like probably just how I picked up stitches and whatever, and whether I was tighter, you know, kind of those little finicky things. 
and since this is a size two this is the size two or the second size available um it's a bit shorter it's not cropped mm -hmm. it just comes so like my hip i'm for one very short waisted so like my hips like up here and then um like my hip dip whatever you want to call that is like down here so it hits like kind of a little bit higher than that um because i'm like i don't know if i've ever said this but i am five eight and i have a very short torso but very long legs so um but i like how this is fitting it's i went with the second size because i didn't want as much positive ease as the pattern calls for um because i am broad on the shoulders so this hits me kind of like right where I want it to in terms of um, the lace work starts where my shoulders are. So um, I like that. I did not alternate skeins. So you can kind of see there's a different color between the back and the front of the sweater. It's more like orange on the back. And I think part of that's because I blocked the back panel in warm water and then the rest of the sweater in cold water. So I'm gonna try and when I block it all together, since I had to pick up for the neck, I'm gonna try and block it all in warm water and see if the color bleeds a tiny bit and kind of rectifies the, the color differences. Cause the, the speckling is pretty consistent throughout the whole sweater. So, but I love this. I'm happy to have it off the needles and officially done done so I can wear it. I'm planning on wearing it out to dinner this weekend since um, my lovely boyfriend and I are celebrating our anniversary and going out to dinner Friday and Saturday. So I'm probably gonna wear this Saturday night when he's taking me out and then I'm taking him out on Friday. <laughs> but uh, so this is my first FO, Mistral sweater, done. My, which one do I want to do next? I've got a, I got a handful of FOs today. So, um, my next finished object is the gable cap. So this is by Tabitha Gandy. And I did this in a Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the Klimt colorway. This is a really pretty cable hat pattern. Um, and I had started this think right before Christmas but um it's got bit bobbles and cables and it's just really fun I wasn't sure if this color was going to look good on me but I think it actually does so let me put my hair down I need to wash my hair it's getting a little a little greasy but whatever so let's see Gotta look in my, my camera screen over here so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so it's like a little slouchy. I'm not planning on adding a pom-pom to this. Um, I tend to add pom-poms to a lot of my hats, but I kind of wanted one that didn't have one. But the color, it doesn't look that bad on me. I was kind of worried yellow's not really a color I pull off very well. I think because this is very uh, warm and golden, um, it's like low-key grello, but really warm. It's like antique gold. So very aptly named for Klimt. But um, anyways, so this is finally done. I've kind of been putting it off because this was like, the cable pattern was super easy in the sense like it was very memorizable as you went. There's only four cable repeats. Um, or four pattern repeats total on the hat but um, but there was just a lot going on so it felt really kind of intense so it was hard to sit down and feel like you made a lot of progress but um, I did finally finish it and it looks lovely so that is done so I have a sweater I have a hat and I've got some more so I don't remember if I had this done last time or not. I don't think I did. I know I podcasted about this, but I think this is one of the times I didn't post. But my 
I Smell Snow Shawl is done. So it's, I did this, so this is by Melody Hoffman, and I did this in Garth and Noor in their uh, number three in the tawny and stout colorway. So Garth and Noor is like an organic um, wool company from the UK, I believe. And so the actual pattern calls for fingering weight yarn. I decided to be a rebel and do DK. So this is very big. And if I'd done this in fingering, or if I had gotten the same gauge with like fingering and stuff like this, this would have definitely have been long enough. But since it's in DK and there's a lot to wrap around itself, um, my sides aren't long enough to really wear it like this. I do wear it like this, but it, it gets a little tight and I have to kind of knot it. So I might need to get a shawl pin for this or something to kind of keep it if I wanted to wear it kind of bandana style. But for the most part, I've been wearing it kind of like a classic shawl over the shoulders. But I'm loving this. It's really cozy. I've been, um, we had some really cold weather last week and uh, my heater was out wasn't working on the um, like upper floors of my house, <laughs> my bedrooms <laughs> in the attic. <laughs> and um, so my bedroom was really, really cold. It was something like the warmest it was was 58, I think, before I got the um, electric company to come in and, and fix it. But I finally got them to fix it, so it's not bad, but I was like, bedecked in this and this has been super snuggly and comfy to just kind of like wear around the house and like wear walking up to the mailbox and things like that. But I'm loving this. I do I really enjoy actually wearing it like this. I feel kind of like a grandma a little bit but um but it's fine. I've been vibing shawls like this because I've been binge watching um not even binge watching I've just been watching it on repeat been watching Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley and Matthew McFadden um, non-stop pretty much for the past like two weeks. So I feel very Elizabeth Bennet when I wrap myself in it like this. But um, this is done. Let's see if you can actually see the eyelets. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, sort of. There's a bunch of eyelets in this baby. And I see it there um and it's super beautiful I will probably make the I smell snow shawl again but in fingering weight like it calls for um just to have it in fingering weight and probably do it in a more colorful option probably something kind of speckly but um because I, I really love the pattern and it's it's really fun. It gets kind of sucky when you get to the middle and you've got a crazy amount of stitches on the needles and it's just really long, but as soon as you start decreasing, it gets so much better. But, um, love this. Consistently been wearing it around the house. I wanted to wear it out earlier today, but it was a little too warm for that. My final finished object, dry socks. So I'm a little bit of a sock hussy. So these are the Wonderland socks. This is a pattern, again, by Tabitha Gandy. And this is the Oh Christmas Tree colorway by um, Woolberry Fiber Co. In her uh, Berry Cashmere, I believe is what it's called. It's her MCN fingering weight sock yarn. Um, both of them are done. These have been blocked. I love the little pops of color in these. Very festive, very, um, the colors make me think of the Grinch. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite uh, Christmas movies, the Jim Carrey Grinch. Um, just because you've got these like super bright pops of color. That was pretty true to color right there. Um, but they're super bright and fun. And they make me think of like really bright Christmas baubles. So these are done. I can't wait to wear these. So soft. I'm I'm a little obsessed with the berry cashmere. I do have a fair bit of it. Um, I bought three 
of um, the Woolberry Fiber Co. Christmas colorways, which I'm saving for closer to Christmas or when I, I'm not gonna lie, I'll get into the Christmas spirit probably um, come May. So I'll, I might cast on a pair of Christmas socks then. <laughs> But that's it for my finished objects. I have a few hoes, so I will share those with you. Um, so the first one I'm gonna show, y'all haven't seen, cause I casted these on like two weeks ago, I think. Um, but these I am calling uh, Boyfriend Blizzard Socks. So it is a three by one rib with, um, garter stitch in the middle between the the rib ridges these are for my boyfriend um, I've always intended on making him a pair of socks in this colorway I have a pair of socks in this colorway and I kind of wanted to start matching socks because I'm that kind of person um, it's pair has not been casted on but I've got everything in a cute little knitting Nelly bag that I'm in love with. I fringe field bags and knitting Nelly um, project bags are my favorite. Um, I buy a lot. Not, I don't buy a lot, but I have a handful of these and they are great. And this is one of the little sock sacks. But I was able to finish up my first ball of the blizzard, so I had to wind up the second one. It's just this really nice AC gray, which is very wintry, definitely looks very blizzard-like, and I just really like it. But those are done. I'm hoping to cast on the second sock soon, but I want to get some other things kind of finished first, um, just because since one of them is a, a present for my boyfriend, for our anniversary, so I'm trying to get that done this week before Sunday. But the other half finished object that I have is for my sister. I have a fair bit of kind of gift knitting going on right now. These, these little babies, little bitty baby feet socks are for my sister. Um, she had tried on, well, I had her model my socks when I was home for Christmas. And um, she had always been like, oh, no, I don't want a pair of socks. I'll just ruin them. Eh, I'm not interested. Blah, 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 blah. And I've been offering to make her socks for a while. And she finally tried on my socks when I had her model them so I could take, like, picture pictures of them on feet versus on blockers. And she's like, oh, I actually really like these. I'd love a pair of socks. So these are the ones I'm making for her. These are the Hermione's Everyday Socks in um, Yas Queen by Hugh Loco in her Glitz sock. It's, it's her sparkle sock. Um, but it's super pink with these wonderful speckles and bright pops of color. Um, I, my sister has itty bitty baby feet compared to mine. And so what I ended up doing was casting on my usual 64 stitches. Um, this is also a Ottoman Indigo mini skein, so I don't really know the name of it, but uh, I casted on my usual 64 stitches, but I casted these on 2.25 millimeter needles. For my socks, I usually use a 2.5 millimeter needle. So these are, um, they will, She's not that much smaller than me, but she's like a seven and I'm like an eight and a half. So I can get these on my feet, but they are very snug. So I'm, I'm guessing that means they'll fit her pretty well. But um, I also, with these, was trying out nine inch circulars, which I had never used before. So these are probably a little bit tighter than they would be if I was using DPNs, um, just because I am unused to knitting on these and um, since it's a small circumference I am I feel like they're probably just a little bit tighter than normal for me in terms of um, my stitch gauge with like a 2.25 millimeter needle 
but um, so I've cast it on the second one my little itty bitty <laughs> bit of rib has been started but um, I'm in no real rush to get these done necessarily because these aren't for any particular occasion I'm just trying to get them done and send them to her and then um, she's I think we're gonna do the little little crafting swap so she's gonna send me something that she's needle pointed because that's more what she enjoys doing so um, I asked for a luggage tag <laughs> so nothing too big and, and hulky but I figured that would be kind of a cool way to uh, kind of do a little mini craft swap and it wouldn't take her too long to finish this is currently living in my plum field bag which my sister got me for Christmas so I felt it was appropriate to stick her socks in here. But that's it for stuff that's sort of finished, but not. And then, got a lot of things here. Um, so onto my grits. So my massive pile of whips that I have going on over here. Uh, to go with my, my Mardi Gras theme, uh, living in a, another knitting Nelly bag that I picked because it has purple on it and that's one of one of the Mardi Gras colors um I ooh, uh, finally got self striping yarn so this is Desert Vista Dye Works um this is Zombody Throw Me Some Beads or Zombody Throw Some Beads and Sparkle cause you know why not? Sparkling is fun. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun. I am going to try an afterthought heel on these. So, um, you know, stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm very comfortable with doing uh, heel flapping gussets. Those fit me really well. So I'm kind of excited to see how an afterthought heel goes and how that fits me, which is why I'm choosing to do it on a pair of socks that I'm making for myself. And I figured self-striping would be a good sock to try it on um but yeah so these are 64 stitches 2.2 2.5 millimeter needles um and i'm just doing vanilla socks in these because i figured this stripe kind of speaks for itself i won't have these done by fat tuesday or ash wednesday so these are just for funsies and I'll wear them next year. I'll probably be in a bigger Mardi Gras mood because I'll probably not be in the South then or I'll be in Florida. So, or just somewhere that's not close to New Orleans to where people get into a real Mardi Gras vibe. But, um, so those are in here. I of course have to have a ton of socks Oh my god, that just fell off the table. I have to have, of course, a bunch of socks on the needles because I really like socks. <laughs> I don't wear them all the time, but I, I certainly like making them. Um, next up, again, in a knitting Nelly bag. This big one is something y'all haven't seen, but y'all have heard me talk about. This is the A Girl's Best Friend Shawl. I can get it untangled. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So I have it on kind of a, a short cable, so I can't spread it out really nicely. But yeah. So this is in six and seven fiber. Um, this pink color is learning to love. The yellow color is um, butterscotch, I think. And then this neutral speckled color is gray lady. Yeah. And this is on the amaranth base, so this is non superwash um, merino. It's so soft. I have never worked with a like a non superwash merino before but this is like super squishy and soft and it's gonna feel amazing and I just want it done this has been a really fun knit 
I'm currently on this last teardrop kind of design panel and then um, then it's onto bobbles and then the ribbing so I'm pretty close to being finished I think I have four more repeats of this pattern to go before um, I move on to the next uh, color change section but I'm super excited this is by Isabel Kramer um, and I already said it's six and seven fiber I've got a ton of yellow left I'm wondering if I'm gonna have um, like a good little nugget left because I might use these this color in my waiting for Henry socks but I'm not sure those are not casted on yet but I've got yarn put it like pull aside for it when it comes to casting the loan I finished my current socks first though so that's that oh shoot Take that back in there I need that um, next up I haven't made any real progress on this but and I don't think I've had a chance to really talk about this um so I did a New Year's on New Year's Eve a Christmas Christmas Eve cast on. I don't know why that was so hard to remember. Um, and I chose to cast on the Evia Mittens by Skein Deer. How is that focusing? This is by Skein Deer Knits, part of her um, second Selwu Mitten Club, which is now available um, without it being the club, I think as of very recently on Ravelry, like this past week. I love how these are turning out. I'm doing, I'm doing them in Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which I think is a little bit of a heavier yarn than what the pattern calls for, but um, it'll fit my hand. It might be a little snug, but they're mittens, so I think I'd much rather them be snug. Um, the only reason I haven't worked on these more is because I need to put the thumb gusset on, um, on a bit of scrap yarn I just haven't done it because other things and being lazy but that is in my tartan field bag and my cute little lamb in a, in a sweater and my Lord of the Rings button pin thingamabob um next up this project does not have a home because it's just been sitting on my uh, on my coffee table because that's where I've been sitting and knitting and watching Pride and Prejudice. So I've been knitting on this a little bit, like a few rows while watching Pride and Prejudice just about every time I've watched it. But this is, I have casted on the Bennett Sisters Shawl. This is by Lindsay Fowler. Is that right? Lindsay Fowler, yeah. So um, this is my little little baby start to that. Um, I bought a Woolberry Fiber Co. kit that they had. This is the Elizabeth kit. Uh, so Elizabeth Bennett, the main character of Pride and Prejudice. And I think this is this is her regular um, berry sock yarn. And so it's like 75, 25. Um, and this is the cloud. Let me double check on that. Um, it's the Chasing Clouds colorway and it's a 80, 20 Superwash BFL. Put that back in there. And then when, and then the second half of the shawl has mohair added to it. So this is the lovely lovely mohair that I will be adding to the second half of the shawl. This is Persian rug. This is a silk mohair. I'm so excited to throw this in there because I think it's going to add some really cool color depth with the Chasing Clouds color. And you know, I need to get my nails done. Um, so these are them together not to have my needles slip off. These are them together. I think they look really pretty. I'm super excited to be working on this 
I'm kind of, I'm feeling the shawls because they're definitely something that I'll wear in terms of um, accessories. I have hats, but I don't wear a ton um, in part because I don't live in an area that you need a lot of hats, but whatever, just fine. I will continue to make hats whether I wear them or not. And if I don't wear them, maybe I'll start gifting them to people. I don't know. My next work in progress is the Haze Scarf. This is by Julie Hoover. This is a Brooklyn Tweed design for Brooklyn Tweed in Shelter. I've made a lot of progress on this. I don't remember when I last showed this, but I have about... 16 or 17 inches left. This is the gift for my boyfriend for um, our anniversary. I uh, started this last October and I just I've been really bad about picking this up and working on it but um, I've put on I know probably about from here to here in the past week. So and that's with me just kind of working on it on and off a bit more but focusing more on getting this done because I I've created a deadline for myself but it's supposed to be really cold this weekend um, we might get wintry mix uh, dropping into the 20s next week for lows so um, I want to get this done and get it for my knitting stuff in terms of life and why I haven't been podcasting since Christmas. Uh, I've been looking for a job. I graduated in December and so I've just been trying to kind of figure life out and hasn't exactly been going according to how quickly I thought it was going to happen. But so I've been kind of, I've been doing that. I've been trying to like get more organized around the house. I've been like kind of dealing with that. So the, I've been knitting a lot, but the podcasting thing's kind of taken a little bit of a backseat. I'm hoping to get more um, regular with my episodes. So we'll just have to see. And I haven't felt like I've had a lot to show, but I need to kind of get over that bump of, oh, well, I don't have any finished objects to show, so I shouldn't podcast. I think that's probably kind of lame of me to feel that way but I'm hoping to get better but we'll have to see um, kind of depends on how the job stuff happens because if I end up getting a job soon I'm gonna have to move I'm also planning to run a half marathon in June so I've been training for that uh, in terms of this weekend uh, ooh, yes so this weekend I am planning on doing kind of a Mardi Gras themed dinner. That's the FedEx guy. Um, this weekend I'm planning on doing kind of a Mardi Gras themed Sunday dinner. So if anyone has any good gumbo recipes, uh, please leave a comment below because I don't have, my family doesn't have a gumbo like family recipe. So I'm kind of winging it this weekend and seeing what happens. But if anyone has some real tried and true, um, amazing gumbo recipe, please send it my way. But um, I'm planning on picking up a king cake on Saturday, and uh, it's crawfish season. Oh my god, it's crawfish season. So probably gonna pick up about two to three pounds of crawfish. It's kind of like an appetizer, and have gumbo, crawfish, and king cake on Sunday with my boyfriend so that'll be kind of fun um that's technically our anniversary so I figured a uh, home-cooked meal and kind of celebrating the very tail end of Mardi Gras season and parade season would be kind of fun uh and provide an opportunity for cute things but uh but yeah that's kind of it for me uh thank y'all for watching please like leave a comment subscribe uh, you can also, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, you can find me on Instagram at The Knit and the Grit, and I'm on Ravelry as 
Jackson Rowe, all one word. Um, show notes will be linked in the little down bar doodly whatever thingy below. Um, because I have I post them on my Ravelry group page. There will be a little tab that is for um, the show notes for this particular episode. I'll have that link below. But then it's a lot easier for you to find the pattern and stuff because it'll already be hyperlinked so you can just click it and it takes you right there. Uh, but yeah, so thank you all for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful week, day, life. Thank you all for watching.